Now today, Xtool announced a brand new laser to their lineup. This is the Xtool P3 CO2 laser. It's an 80 watt laser. You heard that right, 80 watt CO2 laser that could transform your business significantly. And I'm gonna share with you everything I like about it, things that have me most excited about, and more importantly, I'm gonna share with you a link that's gonna give you $100 off the already discounted price. Because if you do today uh, the actual pre-order, with $100, you're going to save $1,000, and you'll be able to get $100 more with our code. Now, we are P2 users, and we've been using the P2 since its initial launch. It's, um, I probably want to say that it's one of the first ones that came off the conveyor line of assembly. And it's been a champ for us, and we really use it for primarily cutting acrylic. Now, I want to show you the size of the acrylic that we typically cut, because one of the things I wanted, I've always wanted, is a larger cutting area. So the P2 has a 23 by 12, 23 by 12 cutting area. And I'm gonna put these two pieces of acrylic together, give you a sense, because this is what we cut a lot of, uh, what this means. So this is the size. This is the size. The new one, well, this is 23 by 12. The new one has even a larger area. So we're gonna go over those specs, because we're talking about 36 inches. So if you think about that engraving area, right? What you're looking at now is the ability to do those real turkeys in one pass without having to have a conveyor. You're looking at being able to cut more acrylic, larger acrylic areas, which means that you're gonna be able to get more done. And there's a lot more to like. So let's go ahead and check out the specs. We'll see what's exciting about it. And who knows, either this is gonna be your upgrade or this is gonna be your first CO2 laser. Now there are several reasons why you may wanna consider either upgrading to the P3 if you have like a P2, or for example, adding an additional laser to your laser lineup because of these key features. Now, the first thing we're gonna take a look at is the actual size of the bed. And for me, that is one of the most important things that now that you have that expanded bed, it's gonna be a significant game changer. 36 by 18, that's significantly larger. One of the things that we've always been challenged with is like if we're doing real turkeys, that we have to use the pass-through. We don't get something that is large enough that represents like what we want to have in the laser. So a 36 by 18 area is gonna give us a larger cutting area that's gonna allow us to have those larger pieces, which today we couldn't have without going through some extra work. And let's face it, the setup is a pain. Like setting up the conveyor, doing all that stuff just is, is just not worth it for us, especially because you need the actual extra space both in front and behind it. So I love the, the actual size. So this is gonna be a big change for me. The other thing is the, the actual power of the laser. Uh, moving up to 80, means not just that it's more powerful, but it means that you could go faster. So there's a relationship between power and speed when it comes to engraving. Now, I know many uh, of you are probably considering using this even for creating tumblers or Yetis. CO2 of all the laser types, think about fiber, think about diode, even think about UV, which are the three primary uh, laser types, and I will include MOPA in that as well, can damage metal. So if you're looking to do a tumbler, a Yeti, you know, type drink uh, drinkware, CO2 typically will not burn the metal. So if you worry about getting the settings perfect, you don't have to worry that much when it comes to CO2. So this is going to be able or give you the ability to engrave tumblers much faster than ever before, and then also work with materials that are more resistant to a CO2 laser, but still you want to be able to personalize. So CO2 is is a wonderful thing. The other thing is, is that you'll see here is that they have increased the speed. Now, 1,200 millimeters per second, let's just be honest, a lot of the solutions out there claim to be super fast, but I've never been able to maximize the top speed. I have lasers that claim that they can do 10,000 millimeters per second. I don't, I'm not able to engrave at that speed. But I will tell you that even at that 1,200 millimeters per second, you should be able to see a significant speed boost in how you engrave and what you do because the combination of power and speed is just gonna allow you to go faster, but still be more impactful. We'll have to see what the testing looks like on this to see how fast you can get to that 1200. Uh, the other thing is the cameras. For me, precision is really important and I know uh, that is gonna be for many of you. Uh, and there are still lasers out there and I work with a lot of those brands that still don't have cameras. I don't get it. Uh, and I would say that in some cases it's because the camera precision is not there, so they choose not to do it. But I love the cameras that I have on my Xtool products. And having four cameras, 
and being able to have more clarity and more precision where I drop things becomes more important to me. And that becomes extremely critical, especially as more and more of us are starting to do UV printing. So there's something called print and cut, where you print on a UV printer and then you take it to a laser and you cut it. Having precision in cutting is important, especially as you've printed something and you, let's say you wanna cut out a, a key fob or some type of tag or any kind of material, but using something that's already been pre-printed, having precision is really important. So this to me is incredibly important, the actual, again, uh, cameras. Now, I'm not a super fan about just throwing all these pieces of wood or metal or any kind of material on a bed and letting it auto arrange. I don't really do that that much, but I do love the fact that I'll be able to have more precise camera settings when I'm engraving and cutting. So that's important to me. Uh, again, the, the laser safety is important. They have that. And by the way, when we talk about laser safety, not only are they introducing their new P3, but they also have the, uh, the new air purifier. The AP2 for me has been the best air purifier that I've had. And it's the one that we use because of it's smoke free, don't smell anything, don't smell any acrylic. And my run from where I have my laser to my extractor is just too long. So we use a air purifier in our setup. So having that is pretty important to us. Uh, and then also, you know, leveling is uh, and focusing. I'll tell you, there are brands out there that still have manual or semi manual focusing pain, pain, pain. Um, I love the fact that this has has the technology to do that. Uh, so again, talking about the position you see here, the autofocus, you're also looking at the depth, um, the fact that you're going to be able to get, check this out, uh, no more manual adjustments, master objects up to 8.5 inches. That's significant. So if you're working with wine boxes, if you're working with leather boxes, gift boxes, that kind of material, not that you're going to cut something that thick, but when we personalize uh, gifts, we'd like to be able to use a laser to do that on the packaging. This is going to be, again, transformational. And then you can see all the things that you can do here. Yes, you can do glass with a CO2. And yes, you'll be able to do um, acrylics, right? That's what acrylics are all about. So there's a lot that you'll be able to work with uh, here as well. Now, this is the other thing. So there is a brand new um, rotary. And I like that it basically has this mag swap tech. And that's going to also make it super easy uh, because, frankly, uh, putting on drinkware, removing drinkware, getting the drinkware in line is difficult. And this is why I typically um, opt to use a different type of laser. So I'm really excited about this 3D preview and then also their mag swap technology and how that's going to work. So I'm excited about that. And then here's the other thing. Uh, that filtration system. Boy, um, again, for the price point for the um, AP2, and there are a lot of brands out there that we've spoken to, the actual performance is, I just can't compare it to anything out there for the price point. And I have been using my AP2 on a daily basis since launch, and I have yet to change the filter. No joke yet to change the filter. So love the lifespan and then also love the fact that it does really well with acrylic. We don't smell acrylic. When it's cutting wood, we don't smell the wood. Um, I'm even using this on a UV printer. So we basically have taken our AP2, put a splitter on it so that we can actually have two inputs, my UV printer and then my lasers all go into it. And it is amazing. It does really well. So I'm excited about that as well. So those are the things that I would highlight. now. One new thing, and I don't know how I feel about this, just to be honest, the 5 watt IR, you know, being able to do metal, uh, I just don't know that it's ever going to be as fast as an F1, F2 uh, Ultra, or an F1 Ultra. I just, I just don't see it. Some of you may want to do metal. I think that if you're doing uh, serializing on part numbers and you're doing a large batch, I can see where this could be useful. But I'm more excited about the CO2. Uh, let me know what you're excited about. Would you want the IR, especially it's a five watt IR. So it's going to be, you know, more powerful than the F1, um, not as powerful as the F2 Ultra or the F1 Ultra. But again, that power is going to translate to speed. Let me know what you would use that five watt IR laser if you picked it up. And then, by the way, let me know what you're excited about. Don't forget to take advantage of our link and also the discount if you're going to pick up the P3.